as Jesus. As Jesus grew up, he learned more and more about God. Because Jesus is God. How can you learn more and more about himself? Because Jesus is God. It's a great question, then. So how can you learn more and more about himself? Because it said, Jesus grew up. He learned more and more about God, his father. Well, because when Jesus came down to earth, um, he grew up as a regular human being, too. So he would read the, the Bible, and that kind of thing. So he would learn more and more about himself? Mm -hmm. I learned more, more and more about um, myself sometimes. I wish that someday we stop forcing this illogical fake story on our innocent children and give them chance to learn about true Jesus and true God. Even church officials when they are confronted with their contradiction with the Bible they have no answer. They can't explain why they are teaching people to go against every word that Jesus said. Are you implying that he was a God? Is that what yes, I'm mean? saying he is the God. There okay. you go. Sure. Now, what so that's what we, just, that's what what you we make disagree of? on. Okay. What do you make of those clear-cut and direct verses from Jesus himself that clearly say that the God of Israel is the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, and he is not God, and he categorically says that I am a man, I am a human being. It's not one verse, it's multiple verses. Let me give you one example. He's a man I, while he's here in the I form would, of Jesus. I, I, would like, I would like you to respond to these things when he says that now you seek to kill me a man who heard the truth from God. So who, who is in his mind, he's thinking that who is God and who is himself. And he mm -hmm. says, whatever he says, is he heard from God Almighty. Why was Jesus this is crucified? Not one place. Let me finish this. This okay. is not one place. He also says that my doctrine is not mine but the one who sent me. So whatever he preached is not construct of his own mind. This is what he got from his God Almighty, who he says he is his God. Now you seek to kill me, a man who has heard a truth from who? God. So himself is identifying as a man, and he's identifying God Almighty as a separate being from whom he is getting his message. I understand he is thinking of himself. I understand the difficulty of the Trinity. I think you're switching. I want you yeah, to respond I'm, to, I'm, listen, Let's listen, not go that. towards the crucifixion. Jesus I said. I want you to respond to this. When he says himself, see the thing is, you have to pay attention to what Jesus is saying, not to somebody else who is saying something about Jesus. We're talking what he said. That's exactly right. So I totally when he agree. Says, when he says that you, so that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Who is he talking to? Okay, can I answer now? Please. Thank you. Yes. Who is he talking to? Let when me, Jesus was in front of the Pharisees, and they asked him who he was, and he gave an answer. What did he say? They said, that's blasphemy. No, no, no. What, he, what answer is he I don't have it memorized, but no, no, no. they said, that's you blasphemy. You have the Bible right here. I want you to tell me what was his answer? Why was Jesus crucified? Did he say something? Because of blasphemy. That's yes, what the Pharisees said. You, you just, they, I'm, I'm actually quoting your own scenario. You said he was asked a question right. and he answered something and then they understood him some way. I want you to tell me what was his answer. Okay. And tell me that when he says that you are the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you said, who is he ask, telling that he's the only true God? Who is he talking to? I want you to respond to this verse, that this is clear cut. I mean, you don't need the tools of implication to explain this verse to me. Which one you wanted at, at to look at? Maybe I can help. Actually, what he said that he you was are the asked only by God. the no, Pharisees. He, he, he doesn't want to deal with that, this verse actually. Mm -hmm. he, he wants to, doesn't want to talk about that because that, this is so clear. That you are the only true God? Yeah, he's, okay. he's in John 17, 3, he says, Now this is life eternal, that they may know you the only true God. Ed, I want you, to, can you can you pay attention to this thing? Just, I'm still looking here. I really, I would really like you to respond to this verse because if you are not praying to the right God, you basically are wasting your breath and your time. 
you can mark that down and you, you can come to it, right? Brother Ed, you can mark it down. The thing is that Jesus, there is no response recorded by Jesus in that scenario. Because, uh, but let him look up. But you know, if it takes time, then we can deal with other passages, as Brother Abdul Khadir has mentioned. My thought is that the single most important topic in any religious discourse is who is God and who is not God. Because whatever, I'll else, agree you are, with that. whatever else you are doing, you are, it's just trivial. If you're not praying to the right God, it doesn't matter who else you are praying. It doesn't matter how, uh, how righteous you could be. My point is this, when you hear Jesus saying this, that he's talking to his God, he says, you are the only true God. I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at, at that you're not paying attention to these words. You're looking for something that he did not say, and you are ignoring something that he did say. So, brother, and there is a word, verse up there, in John chapter 17, verse number 3, okay? That brother Abdul Khadir has brought up. Looks like you still want to find that. You know, even if he finds that. I can tell you it's not there. <laughs> because no, no. he didn't respond. He did sure, not say sure. anything. And even Jesus, peace be upon him, when he comes in the second coming, says in the Revelation chapter 19, he's going to slaughter those who will not believe in him. How is yeah. that a prince of peace? In the Old Testament, Jesus killed many, many people, even the babies. He commanded in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse number 3, go to the Amicalites, utterly destroy them, the men, the women, the children, and the infants. Jesus is saying this, this commandment. How can he be a prince of peace? But you may say there's a proper context. He, okay, he allowed, if you believe in him, then there is no problem at all. There is one God, and he is the one God. So is he the, the one that he's ordering to killing the babies? Why did he order killing of babies? Your Jesus, not the Quranic Jesus. Quranic Jesus is sinless. He's a prince of peace, like all the prophets. Why did your Jesus commanded killing of innocent babies? You mean in the Old Testament? But he was the God of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament? Yes. Was okay. he not the God of the Old Testament? The God of the Old Testament had given these people plenty of opportunities to believe in him. And when they got to the point where they weren't going to follow him, they had to be done away with. Even that the was infants? the judgment that God... No, say Jesus. Don't no, say, God, say Jesus, God. I say God in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. okay. he, he, Jesus he, didn't show up until so the Jesus New Testament. So Jesus was not, didn't exist. Okay. So we've, if we didn't we've hit exist, the wall. how would he be gone? No, no, we didn't hit the wall. It's just logical. No, right? I've hit the wall. Okay, you did. Yeah. See, and any commandment in the Old Testament was coming from Jesus. Okay. So, so important, uh, Brother Ed. I hope and pray that the oneness of God and Jesus as a prophet of God is what we believe and we invite you to believe that along with the Quran and Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you want to come back in the second sitting, Brother Ed, we can discuss it. It's up to you. Uh, no. no, no I, uh... <laughs> okay. But I, right. I, I appreciate your time and the chance to speak and... Uh... I'll be praying for both of you. Most likely you are saying to yourself, maybe this guy in the video is lying. And you're right, it's a possibility. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. But because eternal life in hell or paradise is not something you wanna take risk in, don't take my word for it. And also don't take the word of your priest for it. Look for the truth yourself. Give it time and effort. It's the most important thing in your life. Do you know why? Because if you read Matthew 7, 21-23, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did you not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Can you imagine after all that Jesus telling you, away from me, you evildoer? Find the truth, don't just follow the church or what they tell you on television. We can say that there were, within 30, 40 years, there were three major strands of Christianity. Three major understandings of Christianity. The first type is called Gnosticism, which we're not going to talk about. It's a completely uh, philosoph uh, philosophized understanding. Gnosticism, it's a very mystical understanding. And they pretty much eliminated, there's really no Gnostic Christians anymore. The two major groups of Christians the first of them are called Jewish Christians. This is the name that academics give. 
Jewish Christians. And the second, some people call them Pauline Christians, following, following Paul, right? So there were Jewish Christians and there were Pauline Christians. Jewish Christians, they believed, amongst other things, that they are Jews, that they have to follow the law of Musa, that they have a sharia, kosher and kashrut and all of these laws, that they have to be circumcised and eat the biha or, or kosher meat and basically be practicing Jews, and that Jesus Christ was sent to the Jews, and that He was the promised Messiah, i.e. this is exactly what we believe. It's exactly what we believe, right? now. Paul, who was never an actual disciple, he claimed to be a disciple, he claimed to see Jesus Christ uh, in his vision. Paul was the one who began a whole new theology. What is this theology? Jesus Christ has elements of divinity. He's not just a man, he's a super man, some type of divinity. Jesus Christ came to destroy the law or to obliterate the law. Well, not destroy, it's not a good word, they wouldn't agree with that. Jesus Christ came to make the law unfunctional. Jesus, he came to replace the law. If you believe in Jesus Christ, there is no sharia. And there, the, the, the whole question of, of circumcision is discussed in the New Testament. So he said, you don't have to circumcise. And you don't have to do the sharia anymore. And then he began some elements of the Trinity. He began this and that. So this is called Pauline Christianity. For 300 years, Christians debated over what is the meaning of Christianity. What is Jesus Christ? Is he a prophet? Is he a God? Is he a son of God? What are the Bible? What is this and that? Until finally, and the Romans, initially, you know, the Romans were a pagan religion, right? They had the God Jupiter and they had this. The Romans were the worst enemies of the Christians. And there are these stories that they would find Christians and throw them to the lion pits and they would, you know, uh, the, the Emperor Nero burnt Christians alive. He, 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 he made the whole city of Rome burning a light by Christian bodies. He would light a Christian for the light bulb of the city. So he was, they were, these were evil people and Christians were martyrs and they were persecuted. So for two, three hundred years, Christians were martyrs until a miracle happened. They were probably around 3-4% Christians of the Roman Empire until a miracle happened from their perspective and that is the emperor converted to Christianity, right? Constantine was the first convert of the Roman Empire to Christianity, the first emperor, sorry, to convert to Christianity. Now, Constantine isn't just some Joe on the street, he's the emperor. So he's not going to have these bickerings going on, so he convenes a whole council. All you Christians who are fighting, come let's, let's, have, a, let's have a dialogue and let's figure out what Christianity is. And then he wanted a certain version of Christianity, we're just zooming this quickly through because he's a pagan from before, so he wants a little bit of a paganistic uh, element of Christianity. And so from that, we get the 25th of December, we get the concept of halos, we get the concept of, of a trinity, we get this, we get the Son of God, because they had a Son of God in Mithraia. All of this is, you know, we, all of this comes from, from Constantine's uh, uh, decision in 325 in the city of Nicaea, which is now in Turkey. He held a council called the Council of Nicaea. In 325 CE, Constantine decrees official Christianity is basically Pauline Christianity. All other Christians, we're going to do to you what our ancestors did to the other Christians. We're going to burn you, persecute you, kill you. So there was a massive outflux, an immigration, a hijrah of original Christians to other lands. Right? And this is why it is said that some of them came to the Najashi's kingdom and so the Najashi's kingdom had more Jewish Christians than others. Others went to Iran and so Salman and Farsi, so we're going to come to is there. But the Roman Empire officially banished Jewish Christianity. And there was no such thing as Jewish Christianity officially in the Roman Empire. So Pauline Christianity then became the standard from Pauline. We got the Orthodox, the Catholic, the Protestant, and that's basically 99.9% .9 of Christians. The original others are all completely gone. If you decided to get more detailed information, we have a full series with the complete story in details and proof from the Bible itself. It's not short, by the way, but you can't find the truth about God and salvation in a quick short video. You should do yourself a favor and dedicate time to watch it you will be shocked when you find out what's really going on. And if you want to talk directly to us, or if you have any questions, we are available on Discord and Facebook. We would love to join a call with you to answer all of your questions. Links are in the description and first comment.